Indonesia terkenal dengan bentang alam, hutan, hujan tropis di sepanjang garis katulistiwa. Mirisnya, selama lima tahun terakhir, kebakaran lahan dan hutan di seluruh wilayah Indonesia mengalami peningkatan. Akhirnya, pada tanggal 22 Februari 2021, Presiden Joko Widodo mengeluarkan enam perintah tindakan preventif untuk mencegah terjadinya kebakaran hutan dan lahan. Sistem monitoring yang ada saat ini masih menggunakan menara pengawas dan memiliki beberapa kelemahan. Di antaranya yaitu, pertama, petugas pengawas harus datang ke menara dengan mengandalkan mata dan teropong. Kedua, informasi tidak detail dan belum adanya rekaman data. Serta, biaya investasi dan operasional yang tinggi. Oleh karena itu, kami mempersembahkan Sihutla. Sihutla atau Forest Fire Detection System merupakan sistem monitoring kebakaran hutan dan lahan berbasis Internet of Things. Sihutla merupakan solusi yang dapat diimplementasikan untuk mencegah terjadinya kebakaran hutan dan lahan dengan cara mendeteksi potensi hotspot lebih dini. Sihutla dibekali dengan fitur-fitur yang lengkap di antaranya Pertama, memiliki 9 sensor, yaitu sensor suhu udara, kelembaban udara, tekanan udara, kecepatan angin, suhu tanah, intensitas asap, gas karbon dioksida, curah hujan, dan intensitas cahaya. Kedua, didesain tahan terhadap segala kondisi cuaca. Yang ketiga, menggunakan solar panel sebagai sumber daya. Dan yang terakhir, terdapat tombol panic button yang digunakan dalam kondisi darurat. Sihutla memiliki tiga keunggulan yaitu, sistem monitoring dilakukan secara remote jarak jauh, menyajikan 9 parameter sensor secara real-time untuk data analitik dan prediktif, serta biaya investasi dan operasional yang rendah. Sihutla, solusi untuk masa depan hutan Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Okay, let's welcome to international guest lecture in in um, Institut Teknologi Telkom Purwokerto. Okay, I will His Excellency, Director of Institut Teknologi Telkom Purwokerto, Dr. Arfianto Fahmi, STMT IPM. Respectable Vice Rector Academic and Research, Dr. Tania Wahyu Ningrum, Eskom MT, Honorable Head of SECPIM, Legal Corporation and International Office, Uli Asfari MCOM, Honorable Head of International Office, Birawa Anoraga, SAEMM, Honorable Speaker, and Unforgettable All Participants of this event. Welcome to today's event, the International Guest Lecture 2022, organized by Institut Teknologi Telkom Purwokerto in collaboration with Institut Teknologi Telkom Surabaya. Before we start today's session, I will I will play a song, and I need you participant in singing Indonesia Raya, Jaya Telkom, Mars ITTP, and Mars ITTT, ITTS song. So, let's play.
Kembangkan riset teknik terkini Menerapkan manfaat teknologi Kembangkan peradaban bangsa berdaya saing tinggi Kinerja profesional Cari kerjasama kualitas nyata ITT Purwo Kerto Jaya selamanya Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for um, willingness in singing the song. Hello, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Sarah Astiti, and I will be moderating this event. Let's now begin the International Guest Lecture 2022. We are now going to listen to the welcoming speech given by the Vice Rector Academic and Research, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Tanya Wahyuningrum, Eskom MT. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to send my honor to Professor Pinar Gomez from Duce University, Turkey. Thank you for coming and nice to meet you, Professor. Welcome to Institute Technology Telkom Burokoto. It is our honor to have you today. Distinguished Honorable, all the member staff and lecturers of the Institute Technology Telkom Burokoto and also Institute Technology Telkom Surabaya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Good morning, all the participants. Thanks to our God who has given us uh, mercy, guidance, happiness, and healthy, so we can attend and participate in this event without any obstacles until now. On behalf of Institute Technology Telkom Purwokerto, I would like to extend our warmest welcome and express our gratitude for participating to the keynote speaker and all participants of the international guest lecturer. As the vice rector of ITTP, I appreciate it. I appreciate these activities like this. I hope uh, that in the future, such actions will continue to, in, to be implemented and improved because apart from being the result of research, this is also in line with supporting the vision of the institution to become an internationally competitive university in developing, in developing in information technology-based science that focuses on health, agro-industry, tourism, and small medium enterprise in 2027 and supporting the mission institution. Carrying out research and dissemination of results for the development of science and technology, applying and utilizing science and technology for the benefit of society, implementing good university governance, and establishing national and international cooperation. It is helpful in addition to knowledge for the elderly, as well as additional knowledge from for lecturers, staff, and students. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank all participants who have joined this webinar activity. Hopefully, we will get a lot of benefits after participating in this activity. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you, Miss Daniel Huningo, for the welcoming speech. Yeah, for your information, today's webinar is also broadcasted live on YouTube. Hello, participants who are on YouTube, welcome. Let's join this event together. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, please, I need you to open the camera because we will have a photo session for today's documentation. So, para hadirin sekalian, saya mohon pada uh, para hadirin untuk membuka kameranya karena kita akan ada pengambilan foto bersama untuk dokumentasi. Baik. Silakan. Ayo, silakan dibuka kameranya dulu. Please open your camera, please. Let's we take picture together for this documentation. Oke. Okay. Uh, host, are you ready for the capturing this um, documentation? Oh, well, I will count until three, yeah? One, two, three, cheers! Okay, maybe next slide. One, two, three, cheers! Okay, next slide, maybe. One, two, three. Oh, there's no open camera. Okay, it's okay. Next, one, two, three. Okay, next, let we capture all the participants here. Okay, already. Thank you, host, for helping me to capture for documentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come the core agenda for our meeting that is to hear the presentation for from our keynote speaker. Before we started this session, let me read the etiquette for all Zoom participants for today. I would like to seek you cooperation in combating this event. Can we switch your audio into silent mode to avoid interruption? Unless, unless the Q&A session. All participants are allowed to raise hand and ask the question live. A question and expert session will be held after the speaker present the material in the talk show session. So without further ado, 
let's start our session by introducing the court keynote speaker, Professor Pinar Combs. Professor Kinnard Combs is currently teaching in the Department of Industrial Engineering of Faculty of Engineering, Deutsche University, Deutsche Turkey. After graduating from the German High School in Istanbul, she attended the Technical University and got her bachelor degree in Mechanical Engineering. She worked as an engineer in prestigious Turkish and German companies and gain a valuable insight, she gained valuable insight on the both technical and administrative. Besides her professional career, she also gained a MBA degree from Gipsy Technical University, Turkey, and done her PhD in business administration in the same university. In 2015, she has been a visiting scholar at the University of Indonesia for three months. She served as editorial board member in various academic journal. So hello, Professor Pinar Combs. How are you? Nice to see you. Oh my God, you look beautiful today. Hello, how are you? Um, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Hi, hi, hi. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi, Professor. Nice to see you. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. What time in the Turkey right now? Um, it is uh, six thirty a.m. Wow, early morning. Yeah, it's okay with that. Yes, in the early morning. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prof. Pinar. And Prof. Pinar, are you ready for presenting your material today? Yes, uh, I have oh. a presentation. All uh, right. And I think I should share my screen or... Um, I am not very used with uh, Zoom because we are doing another... Um, program in our oh, university. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how can I share my screen? I can't find it. Ekran. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can. Uh, in, okay, okay. in my uh, laptop in Turkish. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you already share your screen, Prof? Uh, 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 presentation, uh, I try to open the right. All right. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see your slide clearly as well. Okay. Yeah. I think no problem. Can you hear my voice uh, well or I should... Uh, we can hear your voice higher. clearly. Yes, I can hear your voice clearly. Uh, okay. Uh, and greetings from Turkey again. And uh, I wish you a happy and uh, fruitful presentation. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, that, uh, that you give me this chance to collaborate and uh, make a presentation uh, online. And uh, I'm very happy uh, to meet you uh, and uh, to meet the with, to meet with the students and with the um, academics from the Telkom University. Uh, 
Uh, I wish uh, that in the future we will collaborate more, not only doing online presentations, uh, but also uh, doing uh, research and uh, publications. Uh, today, I want to tell you about uh, management organization theories uh, from the early past and early beginning uh, till the uh, present. Uh, because we have limited time and this uh, this topic is a, uh, uh, it is it's a, a topic of a whole course because of that uh, I want uh, it make a compact and short uh, presentation otherwise it should take more and uh, I want to talk about the uh, milestones about this uh, management and organization field, this science and uh, um, uh, historical uh, perspective. <clears throat> First of all, I want to make uh, begin with the definition uh, of the management. Uh, the short definition of the management is um, having the ability uh, to reach the goals with others the attainment of organization goals or organizational goals in an effective and efficient manner so that the definition uh, of the management should include planning, organizing, leading, and controlling and organizational resources. And in this um, chart, you uh, see the process of management. I try to make a big bigger. And you, uh, you can clearly see here that the uh, subparts of the uh, management uh, has an inter uh, interaction with each others. The planning and controlling, organizing and leading all together have the main uh, goal. And to make a efficient management or uh, eff efficient leading. There should be the forces uh, that including in a organization and management, uh, they, that should be good to manage. The forces are social, political, and economic. And uh, they uh, the, these forces come uh, from the internal and external environment of the uh, of an organization. So some of the forces can be managed uh, more easily, like the forces from the internal environment, but the forces uh, like political and economic forces, they are coming uh, mostly from the external environment and so that they can't be managed so easily. And here you can see the management perspective over the time. And uh, it has a, a duration over uh, 200 uh, years period. And the uh, development of the management time or uh, theories are uh, beginning from the uh, early uh, 18th or 17th uh, century and uh, up to the 20th century uh, the main uh, researchers are Adam Smith and the uh, others and then comes the industrial revolution and its influence uh, on the management area. And in the early 
uh, of the 20th century, there comes scientific management till the quantitative approach. And from the later of the 20th century, we can see uh, process approach systems and contingency approach. And then comes the uh, postmodern approaches of the management theories. And uh, if, we, uh, if we talk about management, uh, we, we shouldn't uh, omit uh, Robert Owen, Charles Babbage, and Adam Smith. Robert Owen is the pioneer of the human resources management. He was a... Um, um, he was an uh, owner of a fabric, uh, of a textile uh, fabric, but he has very humanist and uh, social aspects of the management and uh, of the business. And he had uh, uh, deep insight uh, about uh, how to deal with the humans and how to gain more uh, loyalty and uh, high efficiency from the uh, human resources. And Charles Bobich was the inventor of the management. Uh, he was the first uh, philosopher uh, or researcher of uh, this area. And he saw the first uh, man as a science. And uh, Adam Smith was a big impact about uh, 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 on management and uh, other fields. The general popularity of uh, today job is specialization is due to his, uh, Adam Smith's view about divisions of the labors. And division of the labors is um, the breakdown of Jump into narrow and respective tasks. And uh, we can talk now about the industrial revolution's influences on the managerial areas. Um, industrial revolution has originated in the late 18th centuries. Uh, it was uh, the first of all, it was uh, in uh, Great Britain, it, it, it has started in Great Britain, and then it uh, went to the, uh, America. Um, the Industrial Revolution has began uh, with the uh, invention of the uh, damp uh, machines, and it was used into the um, industry. And first of all, uh, it was used in the uh, textile industry, and then uh, it has um, expanded uh, and uh, explored uh, into other fields. Uh, because the industrial revolution, uh, because of the industrial revolution, the machine power was the main uh, resource and substitute uh, for the human power, which made it uh, economical and uh, manufacturable. Uh, in the factories. But uh, the in, um, with the industrial revolution, uh, there has there has become many problems also. Uh, these problems were never thought about before, such as um, living in the big cities, finding right uh, workforce to the right place, and how to handle uh, with the uh, people to make them or to uh, make them uh, work efficient. And uh, with the development of big organizations, a formal theory to guide managers running these organizations efficiently and effectively is needed. And uh, this has um, lead uh, managers to think about uh, how to handle the business uh, in a proper way. 
before this industrial revolution, um, uh, production was in small batches, in small uh, ateliers. Uh, families were uh, producing some things, some goods, and they were uh, sending it to the others, uh, to the other uh, places. And uh, uh, small groups were uh, like uh, the textile uh, groups, uh, the iron groups, uh, like that. And uh, they were using in small batches. Uh, it means not uh, big uh, in big uh, quantities. And uh, with the industrial revolution uh, and we, uh, with the machinery. Uh, it was uh, it, uh, with, with, with this uh, concept. Uh, it was uh, very easy to produce in uh, very big amounts. Uh, it was like a, it was uh, in uh, batch manufacturing. It is told, um, but uh, day by day, the managers and the um, entrepreneurs has realized that uh, batch manufacturing is not the only thing. Uh, the production should be managed uh, uh, effectively. And uh, there has uh, some talked talks uh, uh, inside this uh, area. And we see uh, this uh, efforts in a classical uh, approach. The classical management approach uh, is divided into three uh, sub -schools. It is scientific management, administrative approach, administrative approach, and bureaucratic approach. In the scientific management, we can uh, we can mention uh, about Frederick uh, Vince Tyler, uh, Frank and Lillian Gilbert, and Harry Gant. They are the main and the earliest uh, thinkers and researchers on this area. And uh, I want to tell about uh, in this point that the Establishers of the management are the um, technical persons, the engineers. And in today's um, business and management area, it is not uh, so. Uh, it is not so very uh, accepted. And uh, now, the engineering management uh, are very separated or seen are very separated. Uh, the um, teachings are uh, in separate faculties, not uh, interdisciplined. But in the beginning of the uh, management and uh, organization, it is not so. It was not so. The establishers uh, of this uh, science, uh, so management and business is now a science in is a separate size science and this was uh, found and established by by technicians by the engineers uh, mr tyler uh, lillian gilbert herigant and uh, frederick tyler are uh, technicians are they they, are, they were uh, engineers and uh, the main Establisher of the scientific uh, approach is uh, Frederick Tyler, and he he is known with Tylerism. His teachings are known with, uh, as Tylerism. And he wanted to solve the problem uh, of the effectiveness and efficiency, and uh, he. Uh, he uh, tried to uh, approach this problem as workers indulge in soldiering for three main reasons. Fear of loss of job, increase of increased, increased productivity, 
faulty wage systems, outdated methods of working. Uh, Frederick Taylor uh, was um, an a, a technician and engineer, and he saw the, these problems in a very uh, limited uh, aspect, I can say. He just thought that uh, if you give more uh, money to the workers, they will work more. And uh, if the workers do some faults, uh, you should punish them. And uh, the, uh, the standardization and the methodic uh, ways of the uh, production is the main basics of, this, uh, of, of an business. And uh, time and motivation studies are related to, uh, with Taylor and also with uh, Gilbert's. So uh, I move on uh, Frank and Lillian Gilbert's because these uh, researchers are uh, in the same era and they have um, uh, influenced by their studies, by their uh, findings. Lillian Gilbert also um, influenced uh, Tyler and Tyler also did them. Uh, Frank, uh, also, also Lillian and Frank uh, are uh, main establishers of the uh, motion studies and methodology. And they are uh, now associated with research pertaining and uh, uh, motion studies. So, and uh, Tyler and uh, Lillian and Gilbert, uh, Frank and Lillian Gilbert, are the are mentioned as the establisher of the industrial engineering because the main uh, basics of the industrial engineering are uh, started with motion studies and uh, effective and eff efficiency problems. Uh, the motion study is uh, in the center of that. The way, uh, it is the way of finding the best sequence and minimum now of, of motions. Uh, I mean, number of motions. It, and it can be reached by classification of the scheme and micro motion studies. It means a person of an, or an opera, operator in a uh, production era should do his uh, work with minimum uh, motions, turning or uh, raising the hands like that. All the things should be um, should be uh, in the same in the right ways in the right place so that the uh, operators do minimum motion. It gi it gives uh, the factory uh, efficiency because you can and workers can do uh, their work in a minimum time. They, the, the, the time loss is in the uh, minimum rate. And Harrigant uh, is another uh, important researcher. Uh, he taught about task and bonus system, and uh, he is very well known with Gantt charts. But uh, it, although it is a very um, useful and efficient system, it has limitations. limitations. I mean, the uh, scientific approach has some limitations. The principles of the uh, scientific approach focus on solutions of problems from engineering point of the view, motivated primarily by desire of the material gains, ignore human desire for job satisfaction. By the classical uh, theories, by the classical, early classical uh, approach, uh, the, the workers, the operators, the people, 
were seen as uh, like machines. They didn't behave, uh, they didn't assume as uh, they are humans, they can have uh, different desires, different backgrounds, and different needs. And uh, they can they can be motivated from different things. All this uh, were uh, omitted, and it is the great weak weakness of the uh, classical theories. Administrative theory and its focus on coordinating of the internal activities of the organization. Because the early classicals were not uh, very, they were, they were not very able to see the business as a whole. They couldn't see the great picture uh, of the uh, processes and of, of the whole business. Henry Fayol was a, a breakthrough person. Uh, he was the first who saw the um, business and it is management as an from an administrative way and developed the general theories and gen general um, principles of the management and Henry Fayol has a, um, has an importance in our history also because uh, he was born and lived since seven years old in uh, Istanbul. Uh, Henry Fayol was an engineer, a mechanical engineer, but his father also. And uh, they were French uh, uh, engineers, they were French people. And his father worked uh, by the construction of the Galata Bridge. It is um, it is a historical bridge in Istanbul, and it was constructed uh, in the Ottoman uh, era in the uh, 19th or 18th century, I am not sure. And uh, his father uh, were the construction engineer of this bridge. And so that uh, Fayol were and uh, raised, uh, he was born and raised in Istanbul for a uh, time. And uh, after that, he returned. He returned with his father to France, and he studied engineering. And he he was a pioneer because he was the first one to, uh, to who saw the management and as an organization, and and taught how to organize and manage this uh, business, a, a business. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> According to Fayol, business operations of an organization could be divided into six activities technical, commercial, financial, security activities, accounting, and managerial activities. So Fayol uh, offered the six principles of the uh, manage uh, of the of an organization. Fourteen principles of an management. It is very important uh, when I um, tell uh, in the management and organization lecturing. I tell my students, uh, please consider and uh, don't uh, forget uh, Fayol's principles because uh, he is uh, the first, oh, after that, uh, of course, uh, some includes uh, were also uh, from other uh, researchers into the uh, files uh, perspectives, but it is very useful and uh, also used and uh, practically uh, seen, uh, he's seen in very practical in uh, today's businesses also. Now the uh, still the or uh, many business are divided into uh, activities according to their activities. 
And the managerial activities can be uh, also seen as a process, uh, as you see in this chart. <clears throat> And the principle of the management from the Tyler is division of work, authority, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction, subordinating of individual interests, remuneration, centralization, scholar chain, order, equity, stability of tenure, initiative, respect course. The division of work, authority, discipline is uh, they are related also with the uh, Taylor's principles. But the unity of the command and unity of the direction is uh, still used in uh, today's business also. Every worker should be uh, directed and take the commands from a, from a manager. And it is the main principles of the uh, businesses. And subordination of the individual interest and uh, centralization are also the important principles. Uh, and stability of the tenure. And Max Weber's bureaucratic model also is the last uh, sub theories of the uh, classical theories. <clears throat> In his uh, bureaucratic management theory, uh, Max Weber emphasized the need for organizations to function on a rational basis. Observed practice of nepotism and condemned it, identified characteristics of bureaucracy, bureaucracy derived from German word bureau and meaning it is office a highly structured, formalized, and impersonal organization. The characteristics of bureaucracy is work specialization and high standardization, abstract rules and regulations, impersonality of managers, hierarchy of organizational structure. Advantage of bureaucratic managements are help remove ambiguities and inefficiencies that characterize many organizations undermine the culture of patronite, uh, patronage and that he saw <coughs> the conflict with the uh, principle of unity of, uh, if the cont of the control. <coughs> uh, today's, in today's word bureaucracy is um, is reminding us negative uh, negative ways like waiting in the lines uh, going to the um, government uh, offices and uh, waiting days or months long to take a paper or uh, to uh, to have a signed paper like that uh, but uh, Max Weber, uh, when Max Weber offered and uh, established this theory, he he saw the real uh, the, the world as a utopia. Uh, he set the principles of this model of his model, and uh, he couldn't uh, consider the reality of the words and uh, human uh, the characteristics of the humanity and so the uh, limitations of bureaucratic management and administrative theories are principle inapplicable uh, <coughs> today's complex organizations follows principles of specialization in conflict with principle of unity of control uh, principal characteristic of bureaucracy uh, destroy creativity and flexibility to respond to complex changes in global envi environment and classical theories uh, ignored important aspects of organizational behavior failed to consider impact of external and internal uh, environment 
upon employee behavior in organizations. The main uh, problem with the uh, bureaucratic model, normally it is, uh, um, it was in the beginning very useful and uh, many uh, of the state organizations in the world uh, are following the bureaucratic system because it, uh, it gives high importance to the uh, right people to the right place, high standardization and uh, uh, documentations should be strictly considered. And uh, because of that, uh, it, it, uh, it is seen as a uh, very useful and very uh, helpful uh, model. But in the, uh, in the dynamics of the world, or of the reality, uh, it um, uh, they be a very uh, slow, and uh, unflexible. And uh, after that, uh, because the classical theories couldn't uh, understand the humans and human behaviors, uh, some critics come uh, to this uh, theory, to the theories like approaches and the uh, modern uh, management theories. And first of all, we uh, mention now from the behavioral approaches, and it emphasizes on human element. And Mary Parker Follett is the main uh, researcher in the behavioral approaches. And uh, uh, sorry, I, I want to small. Okay. Uh, Mary Parker Follett saw the human as an element and he considered groups power sharing and integrity. Groups allow individuals to combine their talents as a greater good. It is, um, uh, it is mentioned as synergy. Organizations are cooperating communities of managers and workers manage job to help people coordinate and achieve an integration of interests. Organization as communities, and uh, it has many influences uh, on the uh, coming uh, management uh, approach, like making every employee and owner creates a sense of collective responsibility. It is a precursor of employee ownership, profit sharing, and gain sharing. Business problems involve a variety of interrelated factors. It is a precursor of systems thinking, and private profits uh, relative to public goods. Good. <clears throat> it is a precursor of managerial ethics and social responsibility. You can see uh, all the um, management and organization theories are the antithesis or the precursors of the uh, following uh, theories. And Elton Mayo, Hawthorne uh, experiences and uh, Elton Mayo. It is very important and, uh, in uh, management and organization uh, science. Elton Mayo focus on human rela uh, relations. And uh, he, uh, he was a uh, researcher and industrial engineer in the fabrics and he has a team. And he and his friends uh, as a team uh, experienced, ex uh, they did some experiments. Uh, it, it, it took uh, years long, uh, uh, over 10 years. 
and his uh, it had uh, four phases and the first of all elimination of of the experiments relay assembly test rooms experiments and in interview files and then bank firing observation room experiments and if we make shorten uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> if you make shorten uh, Alton Mayo uh, approach he uh, pre adjustments were job performance depend depends on on the individual worker. Fatigue is the main factor affecting output, management sets, production standards. But the findings were not so strong uh, correlated with the uh, pre adjustments. The findings were the group is the key factor in job performance. Perceived, many, uh, perceived meaning and importance of the word uh, work uh, determine, or, uh, determine the output. Workplace culture sets its own production standard. Elton Mayo and his friends uh, first of all, told that uh, the physical um, standards of the environment uh, could affect the efficiency and uh, effectiveness of the workforce. But it was uh, up to a point, so, but after a point, after then the uh, point, after then a uh, 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 maximum point, I mean, uh, it was not uh, so. It was not so strong like they expected. And he, the uh, Elton Mayo and uh, the team, also thought that uh, the more uh, financial, uh, the, the the more you. Uh, uh, the, the more um, the, the more you uh, support the workers with uh, financial uh, goods or financially, and they will work more harder. The job effectiveness will be good, but it, till a point, but after a maximum point, it is it was again not so high as, as expected and so that the people started to think about uh, other influences about the workers uh, on the workers efficiency and work uh, workforce so that they started to think uh, maybe the uh, and human relations uh, factors can be affected so that they, they have started to put some other um, humanitarian and behavioral factors in this um, in this in their research it was like a uh, it was like a labor so the analysis supported by uh, little evidence as i mentioned uh, up a point of uh, up a uh, maximum point, they, it was uh, so strong as they expected. But after a point, the efficiency were not so high as they expected. Uh, so it was uh, supported by legal evidence. The relationship between satisfaction and productivity to simply simplified it means um, the relation with satisfaction means the more money uh, or the more uh, physically good uh, environment or uh, production it was so simply simplified 
and they started to think uh, about other factors. Failed to focus attention on the attitudes of employees. So the lessons from the Hafton studies are social and human concerns are key or keys to productivity. Hafton effect is a, a well-known term and it means people who are singled out for, uh, out for special uh, attention perform uh, to expect it. And limitations of human resources approach, uh, human relations approach, sorry. The approach says very little about positive motivation. It does not provide enough focus on work and to be very wage. And uh, because the uh, Hawthorne studies and Elton Mayo's uh, approach was not very useful to explain the, uh, the motivation factors of the workers, Abraham Maslow uh, offered some, um, some factors about uh, motivating and uh, about about um, uh, motiva motivation of the people of uh, of a, of a, uh, mankind. According to a, uh, human needs are uh, in a hierarchical way. But first of all, uh, I want to uh, identify uh, the definition of the need. A need is a, a psychological or a physiological defini a deficiency. A person, a, a person feels compelled to satisfy. There are three assumptions. Needs are never completely fulfilled. Through our actions, we satisfy our unsatisfied needs and hierarchy of needs. The hierarchy of needs are uh, beginning from the psychological till self-fulfillment. You can see the uh, muscles hierarchical uh, hierarchy of needs uh, in this uh, slide more better. So the psychological needs are the main uh, needs of, uh, of, of a uh, human. And it without uh, fulfilling the psychology, you can uh, motivate a person to make uh, his a job, for example. The psychological needs are creating food, water, uh, like daily needs. The safety needs. It is the security of a body, of employment, of resources, of morality, of family, health, or property. Most so according to Maslow, in this hierarchical ways, without uh, fulfilling the psychological way, uh, needs, you can't fulfill the safety needs. And without fulfilling the safety, you can't fulfill or reach the lower belonging and the others. And in the uh, low and belonging uh, needs, you can see the friendship, family, and esteem needs, self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respects of others, or respects by others. And self-actualization -actual, uh, is morality, creativity, uh, spontaneity, like that. Uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy is very useful 
in uh, today's business and today's world also. But uh, it is not always uh, accepted in this very hierarchical way. Sometimes people uh, can omit some psychological needs and uh, they can focus on more safety, like um, some, some workers can omit uh, some uh, physical um, well-being in the workplace, and they can focus more on uh, on their security of on, of the employment uh, because they have high fear uh, high, high uh, fear of the um, unemployment. Or uh, sometimes some uh, some people or some worker can uh, uh, can can see uh, as respected by others more than uh, being friends. They can think uh, we don't need to be friends, but we don't respect each other. Because of this, uh, there are uh, many critics about uh, on the uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchical model, but it is also used uh, always in the um, human resources departments and also by the uh, physiologic, uh, psychologic and physiologic uh, therapists. Maslow's theory of human needs uh, deficit uh, principle, uh, principle uh, satisfied need is not a motivator of behavior. Progress, progression principle, a need becomes a motivator once the proceeding lower level need is satisfied. Both principles choose to operate at self-actualization level. And uh, Douglas MacGregor's challenging traditional assumptions about employees, X and Y uh, theorem, X and Y theorem. According to um, MacGregor, people can be, uh, uh, can be divided into main groups as characters. Uh, the, X character is authoritarian, repressive style, tight control, no development, blah, blah. And the Y theory people is more uh, liberated and developmental, supports people and uh, empower others. And uh, you, you can see here how to um, how a staff or a manager can uh, change from X to Y way. Personally, you can be a X person, but as a manager, you can change or you can uh, take another. Um, uh, in other role and you can act as a why people but it is uh, just for a uh, example uh, according to douglas mcgregor the x managers especially uh, he sees uh, the managers from X or Y, from X or Y, uh, Y uh, character side. So the X managers, according to McGregor, according uh, to McGregor, assumes that workers are uh, disliking work, like ambition, are irresponsible, resist to change, prefer prefer to be led. But to him, according to MacGregor, the Y managers or Y character, uh, character 
managers assumes that workers are willing to work. They are capable of self-control, willing to accept responsibility, imaginative and creative, capable of self-direction. The implications of theory were X and Y. Managers create a self-fulfilling prophetics. Theory X managers create situations where uh, workers became dependent and reluctant. Theory Y, uh, y managers create situations where workers uh, workers respond with initiative and high performance. Central to notions of empowerment and self-management. Chris agrees matching human and organizations development, organizational development. Uh, Chris agrees and uh, the followers, I, I can say, they were the first uh, thinkers or the, the first uh, theoretic, theoret theoret theoretic theoret theoret theoreticians who can uh, match uh, the human behavioral perspective with the organizational development needs. So the three major uh, contributions of the Chris Agris are the maturity and immaturity. Uh, uh, theory, integration and organizational goals, model one and two. The model one and two and uh, maturity in maturity theories are uh, uh, very integrated. And the integration uh, and organizational goals are uh, the matching human and organizational needs. Uh, Agri's theory of adult personality is classical management principles and practices inhibit worker maturity adult personality. Psychological success occurs when people define own goals. And adult personality management practices should accommodate the mature personality. Increasing task responsibility, increasing task variety, using participative decision making. Uh, Chris Agri's uh, method is also a very interesting method because he taught uh, the managerial uh, behaviors, the managerial uh, basics should be. Uh, depend on the human uh, development. He told uh, the people are born, they are raised, they are getting older and die. The managers should be considered as that. First of all, the manager, uh, the managers couldn't have the uh, main ideas how to manage, or they couldn't have the main principles how to behave, for example. They are immature, like the uh, in, in the before their adults, adulthood. Uh, in our immature uh, times, like in our uh, childhood, uh, we can't uh, we can't make decisions very well or very appropriate. We can't uh, behave in a proper way. And he, uh, he applied this approach in the, into the managerial uh, aspect. And uh, his model is also very interesting and useful uh, in uh, human resources management. Modern approaches to management. The foundations for continuing development and uh, in management are quantitative analysis tools, systems with a uh, view of organizations. Yeah, I mean, uh, seeing the organizations as a system, contingency theories, 
commitment to quality and performance, performance, uh, knowledge management and learning organizations, evidence-based management. In this chart, we can see the management science or the operations research perspectives, the scientific applications of mathematical techniques to management problems. With the development of the computer, uh, computer, uh, computer systems, the rapid, very rapid uh, development in the uh, statistic, uh, statistical uh, uh, methods, you can uh, apply all the methodology very easily to the uh, daily problems of a business, like production uh, problems, uh, productivity, uh, quality uh, problems, and their uh, calculations. Uh, some of them also include value chain analysis, supply chain uh, management problems, inventory management also, and uh, not to forget. Uh, and in these problems, we can use linear programming, network models like that. And quantitative analysis and tools are the use of large databases and mathematics to solve problems and make informed decisions using, uh, using systematic uh, values and analysis. Typical quantitative approach to manage a real problem solving. Problem encountered, it is systematically analyzed, appropriate mathematical models and computations <coughs> applied optimal solutions identified. Quantitative approach emerged during World War II. Includes applications to statistics, optimization models, information models, computer simulations. Not only the World War II, but also the World War I also, uh, also had a great impact on uh, business management and the theories. Because, uh, in the, uh, because during the uh, war times, uh, it can be seen as the business are in crisis. Mostly the... Um, weapon industry should be work in high uh, effectiveness so they there shouldn't be any quality problems the weapons should be um, product uh, pr uh, produced in appropriate in in an exact time in exact uh, quantities and uh, it has followed the businesses to think in uh, other ways because the uh, resources should be used in weapon industry the other uh, industries like textile the textile should be also very uh, strategical in this uh, war times because uh, uh, without any uh, appropriate textile uh, the army could uh, could move and uh, weapon and uh, textile industry with the food um, some some part of the food industry also are the main uh, strategical industries but the others like uh, electronic automotive they were not so very uh, Hey, uh, very strong in the world times. So the uh, businesses tried to uh, remain strong, and they shouldn't. They should use the minimum amount of the resources in, for their businesses. For example, capital, uh, materials, 
they they sh they couldn't use the resources very uh, very easily and uh, because of that uh, in the after the war, war times you can see high um, increasing of the uh, technology and high high increases and renovations in the business and administrations and the branches of the quantitative approach are management science operations management and management information systems they are the main branches the management science approach is needed for management and science and it is a it can be a question also you can think about it uh, later the areas of usage is capital budgeting and cash flow management production uh, scheduling developmental and uh, product strategy development and product strategies planning for human resource de uh, development programs maintenance of optimal inventory levels aircraft scheduling <clears throat> operations management applied from management sites concerned with inventory management work scheduling production planning facilities location and design quality assurance maybe you can think um, why operation management and management science approaches are so late uh, because the Tyler and Fayol were the technicians and the engineers and who uh, were also uh, thinking about the, uh, for example, material planning, uh, production, uh, cash flow, uh, budgeting, uh, inventory management, uh, especially but uh, the why this uh, theorems or approaches are so late according uh, to their uh, importance uh, instead of their importance sorry and uh, maybe it can be said that um, the, the increased use of computers and mathematical uh, methods is the main factors of that. Uh, uh, you can understand because uh, statistic is not an easy, easy uh, method to use they, as in daily. Uh, their calculations are very long and it takes too much time and if you uh, if you can't uh, solve the problems very easily you will uh, lose your uh, resource too much um, and uh, for uh, special calculations you should uh, you, you should give job uh, to too much people uh, statisticians, mathemat mathematicians, but with the computer, uh, computer and uh, the increase of this computer technology, information technology, is the main uh, main factors of the uh, operations management uh, and science management's development. And management information system is, I am talking about it very uh, short because I want to uh, mention about the others. Uh, it is the main, uh, its main focus is designing and implementing computer-based information systems. And uh, in management information systems, uh, it is very important to, uh, to secure the information and information flow. Organizations as systems, general system or complexity theory, uh, it is the, it was first uh, offered in a uh, chemical and physical era for, uh, from uh, Merton Affleck. 
Uh, according to him, the system is collection of interrelated parts that function together to achieve a common purpose. And subsystem is a smaller component of a larger system. Open systems are organizations that interact with environments in the continual process of transforming resource inputs into outputs. And in this chart, organizations as complex networks of interacting subsystems, you can see they, their interactions and their relationships with external system also. In an organizational network, you can see purchasing inventory systems, human resources management uh, systems, marketing, sales forces, accounting, financial, production. They are all the subsystems of a system. It is our system and they are the subsystems. And this is the, uh, this is the, I mean, it is our system and this is the environmental system. And we can, uh, our, uh, not only our main system, but also the subsystems and their relations or interactions has some uh, interactions and relations with the environment also. For example, uh, the economical uh, conditions of the world, uh, is the environmental system of our business or of a business. And the human resources management uh, can't be influenced uh, or uh, it can't, uh, or we can't uh, say uh, the human resources department can not influence by the uh, economical changes in the world. If there is a migration of the forces, for example, the high educated, high, high talented and well educated, educated uh, people can move from country and to another country. And if there is a, uh, if there is a loss from this workforce, it is not so, uh, so easy to find the right person to a uh, position. In that situations, the, work, uh, the workforce or the laborers can demand more money. And uh, the human resources department can't uh, find very easily and they should give more uh, wage to the people. So, it is not. It is just a small example uh, I wanted to give. That uh, wanted to give and uh, explain. Every systems are linked and influenced by the inner systems and external and uh, I mean in, in inner internal and uh, external uh, systems. And contingency thinking tries to match managerial responses with problems and opportunities unique to different situations. No one best way to manage. Appropriate way, way to manage depends on the situation. There are many, many ways to solve a problem in different ways and in, dif in different situations. And uh, in contingency approach, Morgan and Fiedler is the very well-known uh, theoretics. According to Morgan, open systems, balance of internal needs, adoption, adoption to environment circumstances, circumstances there is no one best way for organization. 
different types of specifics of organizations are needed in different types of environments. And according to Fiedler, leader membership relationship high if the leader is generally accepted and respected by followers. Degree of task structure high if the task is very structured. Leader's positions, position power high if a great deal of authority and power are formally attributed to leader's position. Quality management. Managers and workers in progressive, uh, in progressive organizations are quality conscious. Quality and competitive advantage are linked. Total quality management, comprehensive approach to continuous quality improvement for a total organization creates context for the value chain. I mentioned from uh, from these theories and approaches very short and uh, very compact because all of them uh, are topics of a main lecture. For example, I am lecturing total quality management or uh, management and organization. Uh, they are all uh, main topics uh, because of that uh, i am uh, doing it very short uh, i don't want to bother, bother it uh, too much continuous improvement continual search for new ways to improve quality something always can and should be improved uh, the iso certification global quality benchmark refine and upgrade quality to meet ISO standards. Knowledge management and organizational learning. Knowledge management is the process of using intellectual capital for competitive advantage. Portfolio of intellectual assets include patterns, intellectual property rights, trade secrets, and accumulated knowledge of the entire workforce. Learning organizations, organizations that are able to continue team and adapt to new circumstances. Core ingredients include encouraging information sharing, teamwork, empowerment, and participation. Evidence-based management, making management decisions at, uh, on hard facts about what really works. Evidence-based positive human resources management practices include employment security, selective hiring, self-managing teams, high paid based on merit, merit, training and development, reduced status, status directions, distinct, distinctions, pardon, shared information, and postmodern approaches. They are competitive strategies, organizational ecology, organizational grouping, organizational strategy, transaction costs, resource dependence, information processing, institutionalization, and agency cluster organizations. And uh, to emerging approaches in management thought, I want to talk uh, about the Ushi and theory, say. William Ushi conducted research on both American and Japanese management approaches and outlined a new theory called Z. This theory involves providing job security to employees, ensures job uh, rotation of employees to develop their cross rotational skills, advocates participation of employees in the decision making process emphasizes on 
use of informal control in organization shows concern for employees' well-being, lays emphasizing on their training and development. And thank you very much, Terima Kasi. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I am sorry, it was a very, uh, maybe long uh, presentation. And uh, in the last parts of the presentation, uh, I was a bit uh, tired, I think. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I uh, I mixed uh, some words. Uh <laughs> it's okay, Prof. What a such a wonderful closing you had, Prof. Thank you for my Thank magnificent you. presentation. Okay, so now it this is it. It's time to question and answer session. So there is a, a lot of question here. But before I read the question for the participant, I will ask you first. It's okay, Prof. Okay. Okay. So this webinar examined the historical evolution of organization and management theories and their applicability to practice in modern enterprise. Management, management and organizational theories, it's at something to the awareness to what managers ought to do. It's very interesting, Prof. I want to ask you a question. What is the role of management in the 21st century? Yes. Um, according to new, um, new studies in the management and organization era, the management style uh, in the 21st uh, century is um, um, not so much democratic uh, like in the 20th, 20th century. And we can see the, um, and the, the, the echoes, I think, the influences uh, about this uh, after the pandemic very much. Mm. Um, when I was reading the papers uh, from different uh, scholars, mentioning okay. the, the managerial uh, styles, both in businesses and in um, states, all right. Uh, I mean, government uh, city level. Mm -hmm. The managerial uh, styles should, uh, would be not so democratic and uh, uh, open and uh, clear. I mean, uh, oh. Um, first of all, uh, when I was reading these uh, papers uh, stating these AI ideas, very um, skeptical, skeptical, and I uh, right. couldn't uh, understand well or couldn't believe. But uh, in the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, I can mm -hmm. uh, think maybe they can be uh, right, because during the pandemic, we, we faced um, too much obligatory uh, directions and needs. And after the pandemic, although the pandemic is, uh, is not so strong in many areas, many mm -hmm. businesses are, um, they are seeking to work uh, or they are seeking to uh, handle their uh, businesses from uh, online yeah in the, in the online basis i mean work from home style is uh, expanding more and more and without uh, without asking the work forces uh, or laborers too much they are say they are uh, taking some decisions they are making some decisions in the top level in top managerial level and they they say uh, from now on 
we are going to work uh, as uh, in distance from distance and in and in other uh, ways also uh, you, uh, you can sometimes face the uh, not so democratic styles of the manager management styles and uh, but according to my uh, point my viewpoint uh, if you ask my opinion i mean i think the balance uh, will be uh, in the democratic and uh, not so uh, democratic or maybe authoritarian uh, types uh, will will be balanced in a in an other level maybe more democratic or more authoritarian uh, we can say from this now from this point not, not so very clear but uh, with the increase of the uh, education level the uh, newcomers of the workforce are very uh, they are very uh, realized and they are very they, they have too many uh, they have too many knowledge about uh, their rights as a workforce, they have many knowledge about workforce uh, rights, and uh, they can be managed uh, very easily. They they can't uh, be managed uh, very uh, very easily in a, in a too much uh, authoritarian way. So that uh, I am very uh, skeptical, uh, and I can't say uh, the modern. Uh, manager uh, styles in the 21st century will be um, will be very uh, computer based I, I i i want to say because uh, the artificial intelligence is uh, taking a great part in every uh, areas in the daily life from health to insurance from uh, lecturing studying i mean from uh, can can you hear me sorry can you yes miss Okay, yes, my my uh, it, it, the, elect the electricity has gone and uh, my computer oh, okay, okay. Uh, restarted again. Okay, okay. And um, from health to insurance system, from uh, knowledge, I mean, from uh, scholars and learning era to the banking, in all uh, systems and in all the fields, uh, we can say um, the integration of the artificial intelligence more and it will um, it will affect the managerial uh, styles and managerial area also the managers will be uh, uh, will uh, will take the uh, help of the art, uh, of the artificial intelligence uh, more and they they will use the tools uh, from this uh, uh, from this um, from this part and it will uh, give them uh, more control on their uh, systems on their employees and on the um, subsystems so uh, the workers can be uh, monitored and they are uh, they monitored very very uh, strictly and uh, very um, uh, very directly i mean and it will uh, make them uh, it, it will make them not so feel um, very relaxed. The mm -hmm. manager and uh, the workers, the laborers should be 
uh, take should be uh, more focused on their uh, jobs and uh, right. they should focus on much more on time management okay uh, studies show uh, although the labors are in the office they can use only a tiny uh, percentage of their daily uh, daily uh, shift uh, on their job the, the vast majority of their shift time they are using on searching or surfing on internet and maybe talking with their friends by phone mm -hmm. or in the office and etc okay yes and the artificial artificial intelligence uh, with the help of the uh, tools of that the managers should take more control and the uh, workers can't be so relaxed mm -hmm. okay prof thank you for the explanation so mm -hmm. the role of management in the 21st century manager must be able to adapt to change especially yes. during pandemic all right so yes. Nature must to have uh, uh, the uh, time management, I mean, and wielding digital influence, something like that, yeah, Prof. Yeah. Okay, Prof, there is uh, a question from Mr. Birawa Anoraga. Maybe Mr. B Birawa want to join to us. Maybe you want to invite you to in, in, inactive the Microsoft Microsoft, so you can ask question to the speaker directly. Mr. Birawa, maybe do you want to ask directly to the speaker? Mr. Birawa? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I can hear your voice, Mr. Okay, you can ask the question directly. Greeting, Professor Dinar. I want to ask something. Okay, wait, wait. Yes. Sometimes what we learn about management and organizations collide with cultural issues. Does the stakeholders need to know about organizational culture? What I mean, let's say there is a stakeholder want to invest in my in my group. Okay, what can I show them? any work ethic a good management is there something that i need to show them oh. um, may i please you to um, uh, um to repeat the question of um mr Bira okay Bira all right all right Birama. okay because uh, his voice was not so clear like yours. Oh, all right, all right. I will help Mr. Birawa uh, okay. to read the question, Ms. Uh, Prof. Okay. Sometimes what we learn about management and organization collide will with cultural issue. Does the stakeholder need to know about organizational culture? Because this traditional assumption is very strong, especially in Indonesia. Yes. Maybe there is a suggestion or response from you to form a strong management team. So does the stakeholder need to know about organizational culture? The question from Mr. Birawa, okay? If I understand right, the stakeholders want to know more or exactly about the organizational culture or, or the or the culture of the organization uh, of 
they they are stakes. Let's say, Professor Pinat. Let's say there is some there is some investor. They want to invest in my in my okay in my office in my. Okay. Uh, uh They want to invest then and I need to presentation in front of them. Yes, I understand more better. Thank you. Okay. What? what yes, you uh, are right. Uh, the organiz the, the cultures of the uh, the societies plays a big role in the cultures of the businesses in the organizations also because the organizations, the businesses, the companies are established or they are coming from the people in, from the from the people from the society in the in the in the in which they are established from for example a company in turkey a company in indonesia mostly uh, hires turkish people or indonesian nor uh, on, only a tiny uh, percent of their maybe workers are from abroad. Um, so um, if you are a um, foreign company to invest in Indonesia, you should know about the cultures or the cultural um, uh, milestones of the nation. For example, I know Indonesia a bit better because I have uh, I have been there for three months, and uh, I I realized that we have uh, very similarities because uh, we have uh, mostly we have uh, the same uh, religion, but it is not also the only religion. Um, we, we have uh, similar points that we Tur Turkish people are also coming from the Middle Asia, the Asian culture, I mean, like respecting the old people. Oh, uh, it has uh, deep uh, religious uh, basics from Islam, I know, but not only. Before Islam, also we were uh, obeying and um, giving high importance in, in our ancestors and uh, our old people, respecting and uh, obeying. Uh, for example, we are still living with our grandparents in, in, in Turkey. It is very important in our culture and in Indonesian also. And the, uh, the Western uh, people mostly can't understand this. And uh, we are working in our workplaces as we are living in our homes. If you are, uh, if you are giving high importance from uh, thoughts, if, uh, high importance on the thoughts of the, the, your parents or grandparents, I mean the elderly and obeys, you are always uh, more. Uh, you are always more, um, more linked, more, more uh, behaved to uh, obey and uh, uh, give importance of the managers in the uh, in the company. In uh, it is changing now, but uh, in Turkey companies are trying to uh, give the managerial uh, roles to more elderly people. If you are too young, you can't be a manager, for example, because it is believed the others won't be respect you. And uh, it, is, uh, it is very uncommon for uh, Western people. And uh, to invest in a other country, you should know the general culture of the society and the company uh, on the country very well. But uh, if you are asking, I am a, 
uh, inventor. I am an Indonesian and I am inventing in Indonesia and I want to know about the um, cultural, uh, about the organizational culture, culture of the uh, organization, for example, uh, in a uh, in a factory in uh, Jakarta. Uh, to to gain the uh, organization culture is not so easy and very uh, uh, short term uh, activities. If you uh, understand a organization, uh, if you understand and know if a organization has a deep organizational culture or not, you should uh, consider the uh, turnover rates of the labor. I mean, if there is a higher rates of turnover from the labors, the labors are coming and going in very short times. And the average uh, work work time of a, um, in a company, for example, is uh, two years or one year. It is very short. In that uh, in that uh, situations, you can't uh, mention for a man a deep organizational culture. If you understand uh, a company uh, from the first sight, you should always consider the. Uh, turnover rates of the uh, work labors, workforce, I mean. And uh, if you understand, uh, to, un to understand the um, culture of an organization, for example, open-minded or very uh, domestic or other, uh, you, can, uh, you can make a visit to the company and uh, you can just uh, make a small um, uh, uh, small discussions i mean small um, uh, talking with the uh, uh, with the operators and middle level managers uh, sometimes the the operators, I mean, the, the workers, the work, workforce, uh, they can be very willing and very open to newcomers. And they can very, get very easily friendly and uh, talk about the uh, po pro, uh, I, I mean, uh, the positive and negative uh, parts or, or issues from the uh, company. In in this case, you can say uh, there is a um, there is an open and more democratic uh, organizational culture. But if the people are very skeptical and they maybe you can feel that they, that they are uh, that they that they have some fear to talk with you, then you can understand. In this uh, company, the managerial uh, levels are not so open and friendly to the uh, work levels. All right, Miss, thank you so much for the explanation. So that I get from your explanation is business with an organizational culture tend to be more successful than less structured companies because they have system in place that promote employee performance, productivity, engagement, and having a strong company culture motivate everyone to do their best work. So reason why organization culture is important, the first thing is increase employee engagement. The second is decrease turnover, and also strong brand identity, also elevate productivity, also transformational power, top performance, effective onboarding, and healthy team environment. Something like this, Prof? Yes. All right. So guys, just because time is up, okay. So ladies and gentlemen, finally, we come to the end part of our presentation. 
we would like to say thank you again to the presenter to the informative and interesting talk and to the audience for active participant something like that okay i will give a conclusion before we uh, end this uh, event i will uh, give some conclusion okay so the conclusion is management in essence is the process of design and perceiving an environment for the purpose of efficiently achieving organizational goals manager perform the function of planning staffing organizing leading and controlling it is an important activity at all level in an organization something like that management as a practice instead of a science alleging alleging sorry that it is parallel to law medicine and engineering also organization on the other hand is a network of contract between the people in the firm and then uh, essentially management and organizational theorists tend to give an explanation explanation for and help understand the first changeable nature of organization and development okay so ladies and gentlemen we finally come to the end of today's agenda these are the agenda we have presented to you all this morning we hope you learned something thank you so much for your attention to today even the international guest lecture 2022 organized by institute technology telkom Purwokerto in collaboration with institute technology telkom surabaya see you on the next occasion wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh have you Good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Purwokerto Kota pelajar yang memiliki multi culture. Setiap tahun 2 juta wisatawan datang untuk berkunjung. Destinasi wisata terus berkembang dan muncul. Keindahan alam merupakan potensi dan daya dukung. Tumbuh sebagai kawasan kota, Purwokerto menjadi kota strategis. Pembangunan sarana transportasi mendekatkan kota ini dengan kota-kota besar di Indonesia. Dukungan tenaga ahli teknologi informasi merupakan modal Purwokerto menuju Smart City. Awal tahun 2002, berdiri Akademi Teknik Telekomunikasi Akatel Sandi Putra Purwokerto. Berbasis Information and Communication Technology, tahun 2012, institusi pendidikan ini menaikkan menjadi Sekolah Tinggi Teknologi Telematika Telkom. Pengalaman mencetak tenaga ahli teknologi Tahun 2017, STT Telkom bertransformasi menjadi Institut Teknologi Telkom Purwokerto. Saya sangat beruntung kuliah di ITTP Purwokerto karena di sini saya tidak hanya diajarkan tentang telekomunikasi, tapi saya juga diajarkan tentang soft skill yang dimana akan menunjang karir saya setelah lulus nanti dari sini. Banyak pengalaman yang saya dapatkan di sini, entah itu dari dosen, dari teman-teman, dan itu sangat 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 menarik untuk pembelajarannya. Pembelajaran juga nggak cuma muluk-muluk di kelas, di kelas, di kelas, tapi juga ada di lab. Berbicara mengenai kualitas dari metode pembelajaran yang diterapkan Institut Teknologi Telkom Purwokerto, memiliki keunggulan yang cukup luar biasa. Salah satu keunggulannya adalah dengan menggunakan pembelajaran blended learning dan juga collaborative learning, di mana dosen dan juga mahasiswa dapat berinteraksi secara langsung dengan objek pembelajaran yang diterapkan oleh kampus. Metode pembelajaran yang diterapkan di Institut Teknologi Telkom Purwokerto itu ada yang model uh, klasik, tapi juga uh, kemudian sekarang sudah diterapkan model e-learning, jadi perpaduan antara model di kelas dengan uh, e-learning. Institut Teknologi Telkom Purwokerto adalah perguruan tinggi yang berorientasi pada masa depan. 
Secara penjaminan mutu, IT Telkom Purwokerto telah terakreditasi oleh BAN PT, yaitu Badan Akreditasi Nasional Perguruan Tinggi dengan predikat baik sekali. Ini artinya bahwa IT Telkom telah melampaui standar nasional pendidikan tinggi. IT Telkom Purwokerto juga menjalin kerjasama dengan mitra, baik itu dalam negeri maupun luar negeri yang meliputi industri maupun lembaga institusi pendidikan tinggi. Kami juga bermitra, bersinergi dengan PT Telkom beserta anak perusahaannya agar lulusan-lulusan kami lebih mudah diserap oleh industri, terutama industri ICT yang ada di Indonesia. IT Telkom Prokerto uh, lulusannya siap bekerja ya, di mana ilmu pengetahuan yang uh, didapatkan di IT Telkom Prokerto itu bisa dijalankan di Telkomsat. Jadi antara jurusan yang dimiliki oleh alumni IT Telkom itu cocok dengan dunia kerja yang ada di Telkomsat. Selama saya berkuliah di IT Telkom Purwokerto dan mengambil program studi teknik informatika, saya diajarkan banyak hal. Salah satunya adalah mobile programming, di mana saya diajarkan untuk membangun sebuah aplikasi yang nantinya bisa dipakai oleh orang banyak. Aplikasi yang kami kembangkan adalah aplikasi startup. Startup kami adalah Becer, yaitu aplikasi untuk memesan sebuah sayur untuk diantarkan ke rumah pelanggan. Hai di Telkom, membangun Indonesia, mencetak tenaga ahli terampil dan berwawasan bisnis. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Saya Tri Arief Sarjono Rektor Institut Teknologi Telkom Surabaya Institut Teknologi Telkom Surabaya merupakan perguruan tinggi di Jawa Timur yang didirikan oleh Yayasan Pendidikan Telkom pada tanggal 4 September 2018 dan kampus utama IT Telkom Surabaya berada di Jalan Ketintang nomor 156 Surabaya IT Telkom Surabaya merupakan kampus yang tergabung dalam aliansi perguruan tinggi di bawah naungan badan usaha milik negara atau aperti BUMN. <SILENCIO>